Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. I am Inma Borrella. I am a research scientist at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, and I am also the academic lead of the MicroMasters program in supply chain management. I'm co-hosting this live event today with Mr. Paulo Sousa. Hi, Paulo. He's the course lead of SECUX Supply Chain Analytics, and he will be co-hosting this live event with me, as I mentioned. And today, we're fortunate to have Mr. Jason Pan. He is Lead Data Analytics Manager at Nike. Jason is also a MicroMaster credential holder and an MIT Supply Chain Management Master's Blended graduate. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me. So um, before we start, this live event is brought to you by the MicroMasters program in Supply Chain Management. So let me briefly introduce the program before we start the discussion with Jason. Um, I know many of you may know the program already, but this is a brief introduction for those of you who, who are not aware of what the program is about. So I prepared a couple of slides. Let me share. I will be quick, but this illustrates very well what the program is. So the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management is a MIT, it's based on MIT grad level content in supply chain management. It's taught by MIT instructors, MIT lecturers and professors. It's a hundred percent online. So it can be taken by anyone, anywhere in the world. It's a truly global program. The learning is asynchronous. So you can really like choose the time of the day or the day of the week that you uh, want to uh, review the contents in the courses and the feedback is instantaneous, which is really powerful for like really great learning experience. The curriculum, well, we cover a wide variety of topics in supply chain from the um, basic techniques that any supply chain management manager should have in their toolbox that are um, data analytics, probability, statistics. And then we go through the basics of supply chains, forecasting, inventory, transportation, network design. We also cover strategy, a little bit of global operations, resilience, sustainability. And we end the program with data management, machine learning, supply chain systems. So we really go from like every topic you can imagine uh, about supply chains, we cover it in the different courses in the program. The program consists of five courses, and you can see all of them here. And each one has a different flavor. So everyone has a favorite, favorite course at the end of, of the program. What is really special about the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management program is that it is a pathway to a master's degree at MIT. And this is what made it is so unique and so um, valuable for many people around the world. So in order to um, complete the MicroMasters, you have to complete the five courses I just mentioned, plus a comprehensive final exam. If people pass the comprehensive final exam, they will get the MicroMasters credential in supply chain management. And this credential is a key to access the MIT Blended Masters in Supply Chain Management program, which is an official master's from MIT, but can be completed in only five months on campus and at a fraction of the price. So it's a very interesting option, particularly for people who are uh, just working and they don't want to take a very long break from, from their, their current work. Um, this is also a globally recognized program. So it's a pathway to master's degree at MIT, but it's also recognized by practitioners all around the world. Many companies, many big names are, are recognizing the program as having like, it's been very valuable for people who are applying for jobs, but also they're using the program to train their own workforce in supply chain management topics. And other academic institutions beyond MIT are also recognizing the credentials. So it's a pathway for credit at Arizona State University, Harvard Extension School, and more than 20 universities around the world. And you can find all that information on our webpage that uh, I guess Lisa will be sharing in the chat shortly if she has not done so yet. And just so you understand the size or the impact of the program, since we launched the program in 2016, we've seen more than 1 million people enrolling in our courses. We uh, have uh, issued almost 70,000 certificates that are unique certificates per course. And we have issued more than 5,000 credentials. We have more than 5,000 credential holders around the world, which of course is great. And we hope to see this number like increase even farther. And actually Jason, both Jason and Paulo are credential holders. So they are both alumni from the program. 
So that was a brief, brief, brief introduction. If you want to know more, visit our webpage and Lisa will be sharing some interesting links in the chat. But now let's start with the webinar. Um, this, um, and we want to start with uh, just launching a fan poll. We will be launching polls throughout the webinar, so be ready to, to participate and engage. Um, but the first poll is about, it's a question for you. We want to know more about our audience. So why are you here today? Let us know why are you here today. And while you respond, maybe, Paolo, do you want to introduce the agenda for the session? Of course. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here with you all. For about the next five minutes, Jason will introduce himself and explain his current role, uh, role at Nike. Then Ima and I will ask some questions we have prepared, but you can also share your own questions with us. Uh, please use the webinar Q&A feature to do that, not the chat, but the Q&A feature, and be sure you're uh, logged in with a name. Uh, we will also share a couple more polls during the event, as uh, Ima mentioned, so be prepared to, to participate. So Ima, let's check the results from our first poll. Okay, so it seems that the majority here want to learn more about data analytics for supply chain. That's great. Uh, we have a lot of people doing the MicroMasters in supply chain management and don't miss any live event. That's also, uh, that, that's great as well. Yeah, so thank you for, for sharing your feedback on this one. So let's go with um, Jason. Are you ready to kick off? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, ready to go. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here today to talk about data analytics and supply chain. Um, you know, I think that that overview was fantastic too, because it seems almost too good to be true, right? You have this pathway into MIT, you're learning all these different um, facets of supply chain, um, you know, with the comfort of your home. And I, I was honestly one of those people, right? I was looking from the outside, um, trying to understand, you know, how do I go about not only developing my skill sets and analytics and supply chain, but also possibly getting a master's degree at the same time. And so to roll it back a little bit, um, I've been working in supply chain for most of my career. You know, I, I came out of undergrad with an econ degree and I honestly didn't even know what supply chains were, right? I was looking for a career and I, I knew I wanted something that was analytical uh, based, you know, where you could use math and, and do some forecasting or planning in order to make some changes for a company. And I, I honestly, supply chain seemed um, at first kind of uh, like this, this, this like hidden, hidden business function that no one really knew about, but was so critical to making sure everything functions. And um, when, when I got into it, I was like, oh, wow, this is, there's a lot of analytics here. You know, this is, this is making sure, you know, we we're doing the right things in order to make the right products at the right time as efficiently as we can. Um, so I started off working at Oracle. We built uh, uh, big old enterprise servers. Uh, now they've shifted to the cloud computing, but really just making sure we're buying the right materials. We have enough stuff on hand to build these products, you know, build to order and shipping them out. And that's when I started got, getting curious about, you know, like, what is this function? How do you learn more about the supply chain? And one of the issues I found was just that it's so easy to be myopic in sort of the, the role that you're in. If you're a supply chain analyst in the manufacturing world, your day-to-day -day is focused on making sure you have the right materials on hand or are the POs coming in, but you don't really see the, the upstream, you know, demand planning side and you don't see the downstream logistics side of what materials are being shipped to and really how the whole, you know, uh, system is being interlocked. And so the uh, next step, I'm like, well, let's go into global planning. You know, let's see if we can um, learn a bit more about how we plan these products. And, and so I went to Thermal Fisher Scientific in the global planning realm, figuring out, you know, how do we do forecasting? How do we do planning? Uh, how do we how do we build these products? In this case, it was spares for electrical microscopes, but this concept is the same. It, it really is just understanding the products that we're building. How do you flow it through? And after that, I was like, well, okay, I have another facet of supply chain, but I still feel like I don't know the whole the whole shape, the whole dig, right? Like I econ, not enough there. And so that's when I started researching about supply chain management programs and the MIT one. Um, was just wonderful because it, it allowed me to pivot on my own time period. I didn't have to immediately, you know, do the GMAT, get into grad school or, or go through the, the applying period. I just took the courses in my own time. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, took a shot and applied to the MIT program and ultimately uh, happily got in. And um, afterwards, uh, got a job at Nike doing 
data analytics uh, in their supply planning realm. But I think the, the core fundamentals of what this program teaches is just so vital. You don't have to get a degree. Um, you could just do this part time. You don't even have to you know, spend the money to get a certified course. You could just audit these courses uh, and the concepts and the principles and things that you learn, I, I think are just it really fills in the gaps, especially if you're in business, especially in your supply chain. It does fill in the gaps of like how things are structured. Why do we do safety stock a certain way? Why do we do inventory stock and policy a certain way? It provides such value for money that I think that this is, um, yeah, this is a fantastic program and I'm happy to give back, happy to talk about, you know, how we leverage this in our industry, but, but just in general, like it's, it's uh, I just want to say this is, this is brilliant, you know, for the community. Um, I guess a little bit about Nike. I'm, I'm a data analyst manager in the supply planning realm and um, really focused on Nike's long-term uh, supply planning um, status, right? We're, we're building analytical tools to make sure we are uh, supplying correctly to the demand signals that we've given for these tens of seasons uh, into the future. Because we have to make sure our factories are ready to go. They have the right capacity plan in order to build all these cool shoes, all these, um, you know, AJ1s and what have you, right? We have to make sure we're getting the mix right. And we have to constantly check, you know, as our seasons are coming up, you know, how well are we doing? And then working with our, you know, senior leadership to make sure, you know, what levers can we change in order to um, make that happen? And so, you know, you can imagine with all that information, we have a lot of data. And with a lot of data, we have to build the right tools. We have to build the right um, data ingestion platforms in order for senior leadership to actually understand what's happening because it's 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 very complicated, but we were trying to simplify it as best we can. And I'm sure the analytical tools that you're, you're going to learn in this program will will definitely be of value. A lot of information there, but just wanted to you know, wrap it like that. Thank, thank you, Jason. Thank you for a great introduction and, you know, for like, and your passion for supply chain really comes through and uh, mm -hmm. that's a shared passion for, for us for sure and also yeah. for many you know, people in our audience so that that's yeah. great i think we're all connected with that passion um and thank you for the kind words about the program i think it really is very transformative for many people so i'm glad it was it was for you as well so now that we know a little bit more about you and your your expertise and your journey in the supply chain management space we want to dive into some questions. So are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. So, um, you know, most companies nowadays are obsessed with data, I think, and rightly so, right? They, they should, they should be obsessed with data, digitalization, and also new technology implementation. Particularly that piece of new technology implementation, there's so many new technologies out there. So digital twins, blockchain, AI, IoT, so if mm -hmm. you have not implemented some of these, you may feel you're getting behind. And many companies are really pushing strongly for, for having these implemented. But there's also a lot of hype and misunderstanding around this that could lead into like, big investments in technology that then are not, do not have a proper, they, don't, they are not used in a tool that is really used to make the decisions of the company, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So based on your experience, could you share an example of how some of these new technologies are creating tangible impact in supply chain management? Yeah, no, that's a that's a really big question. That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think these tools um, that that we're learning about, right, digital twins and and sort of the the new AI capabilities, it's definitely taking the world by storm. Like it's now undeniable that you know our phones now have AI capabilities, and pretty much everywhere you go on Google, it's making suggestions that's that's AI supported. Like they're very powerful tools, and and I can say that at, you know at my current company, you know, we do look at. Right. I think a couple of years back, we were actually, you know, looking at Nike NFTs. And I, I know right now we're, we're, we're building powerful simulation engines to to in the supply planning realm, figure out how do we optimize, you know, um, how we how we plan our supply and, and tinker with the levers that we have in order to to make sure we can optimize our, our business function. But I think it's it's not it's 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 hard to say. It's, it's you have to manage the expectations i think when you when you talk about these tools because yeah i mean even in the coursework right you learn about these great algorithms and optimization and, and, and uh, the ways of, of efficiently building you know tools to save money but I, I think it's the aspect of actually getting the the leadership and the company um fully aligned in order to make these decisions happen i think that's where the difficulty lies right one thing that i, I think my manager said very aptly is 
things that we've done before that were very successful within a company that's that's growing and that's it's been there for a while, it's very hard to change the mentality with new tools, right? If if they've been successful with a certain um, way of planning, if they're successful with a certain way of operating their business, and you have this new technology, it's hard to convince some of the old timers, the people who've been doing this for so long, that like, hey, we should just move over and do this other thing that's more advanced and more capable. I think there's a little bit of storytelling that you have to come together in order to bridge the gap a little bit. And, and I think, you know, the, the little exposures by touching the water and, and trying these little things are, are helpful, but I think it just depends on the type of um, project that you're working on. I think for new ideas, right? So if you're a company and you are doing uh, leveraging a new capability, I think that's where these new tools can come into play because there's no space yet, right? There's no functionality yet that's already been defined. There's no leaders or stakeholders that have been managing this process. So we can go, hey, let's experiment. Let's try out, you know, this new model or this new approach or this new capability and then test it out, you know, do a couple of pilots. And through that, maybe that could become something that that is its own entity. So I think there's a little balance of the two. And um, all these tools are really awesome. And, and, you know, we are looking at them. Um, you know, digital twins, even even leveraging Copilot, I think is is, is transformative in, in how we do our work. But it's still kind of that balance between what worked before versus doing these new things, and it's it's kind of um, it's kind of tricky, right? Yeah, no one wants to rock the boat too much, especially when things are good. But I, you know, when you want to do new, greater things, then that that's where you have to start looking at those things. Yeah, you mentioned something. Um, it's really interesting that. You yeah. got to have the buy-in from leadership, right? Yeah. And I want to follow up on that. But first, let's launch our second poll. Um, and while people re respond to this it's one. It's actually very I'll, I'll closely related to this, right? Exactly. So, so, so our question is, what's the biggest barrier between data and decision-making in your company? Is it translating data speak into human speak? Is it convincing the boss that AI isn't just sci-fi? Uh, maybe turning spreadsheets into something less snap inducing uh, or all of the above help? People are already re responding to this. So my question to you, Jason, would be, uh, yeah. so moving from data to decisions can be a lengthy process, um, especially when building forecasting and AI models. So how can companies ensure these insights translate into actionable business decisions? How how important is it to communicate these findings in a business-friendly language? Uh, what challenges come with that? I know it's a big question, but feel free to elaborate it on, on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you could share an example with the audience, like it could be successful or not, uh, and a successful mm -hmm. example or mm -hmm. not, because we yeah. can learn from both successes and failures. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's a really good question. I think that's that's you know, a, I think the challenges vary by company as well. I think company culture does have an influence on um, translating data into actual actions. You know, like um, one example, and this is I I don't work at Amazon, but I can imagine right, Amazon is going to be very data focused, and I think they maybe have their pipelines in place to to influence change maybe a lot easier than, than some other companies. So I think it depends on the culture. And I, I can say, at least from my personal experience here, is that in order to get the buy-in, I think you have to focus on the, the actual customers, right? Like what is, who is the customer in your perspective and what do they need, right? It, it, it's, 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 you have to go from the customer needs in order to build the product that, that is gonna be successful and successfully adopted. If you're building a really cool forecasting planning engine that you learn from SC0X, right, with the with the best model that has the the, the best, like you, you can show them all the papers and, and all the numbers, and then you just give it to them and you go, hey, I got a better solution for you. They're going to go, great, thanks. I'm not going to use it. I don't know what it is. I, I haven't been there working with you on this. I don't believe, you know, maybe it's, maybe it is a great model, but they don't even it, they don't even understand like what it is that you're trying. It's like, it's a, it's a lot of back and forth that I think you have to have this journey with your business stakeholders. You have to understand what it is that they want to solve and then provide the solutions for them. And, and I think uh, this is, this is another quote that I'll say my manager gave me a good, good idea on it. So it's like, we have a desire to control things, right? We want to know what it is that we're, that we're doing in order to make these, these changes. When you start talking about new models or, or even, you know, generative AI uh, suggestions with Copilot, 
I think the, the control gets lost a little bit, right? The model is automatically being generated for you. The code is automatically being generated for you. And you just need to find one error or one mistake or one thing that's wrong. And then you have a, a like a trust issue with it. You don't, you don't, you don't know how the engine is doing its thing. And you don't, you can't really trust it because you can go back to your safe Excel and, and do your models yourself. And you, you are tinkering right behind the hood and you, you're, you're able to do it. So I think it's a little bit of, it's a dance between the two. And I think in this time period with all this new technology that's coming out, the growing pains is going to happen. I think we're just going to have to slowly walk through this together and, and see where these technologies can change the way we work with business and, and see how it can change, you know, decision making. But it's, it's, a, it's a lot of back and forth. It's, it's never, it's never one thing, but I think, I think transparency, visibility, getting the stakeholders together is, is the most important part, walking this together and understanding what it is that, that is needed in order to build that final product. Yeah. Very, very interesting reflection. Like the black box, yeah. black box issue is a yeah. huge issue. And the more advanced and the more sophisticated the models are, the harder are for people to, to understand, right? Maybe not only because it may be obscure, but also because they don't understand the basics mm -hmm. behind the models in, in many occasions. Yeah. So that, that's a huge challenge, making that translation. Actually, yeah. let's, um, let's have a look at the poll results because, um, I think many people agree with uh, what you just shared, Jason. Actually, 39% of respondents just said that the biggest barrier between data and decision making at their companies is translating data speak into human speak, mm, which yeah. I think is you know, closely related <laughs> to what you were just yeah. saying. And, uh, you know, so all of the above, uh, people are clearly struggling. So this is, there's, there's a lot of need for people like you, Jason, who can actually <laughs> translate <laughs> between the data and, and, the, and the business. Uh, so yeah. I'll stop sharing and let's go with the next question. Um, so actually did you mention something uh, about related to this earlier at the, in your introduction. So global mm -hmm. retail companies must manage inventory effectively across multiple yes. markets with fluctuating in demand due to continuously changing consumer preferences and trends, right? Particularly in the mm -hmm. apparel industry, you know, we, we all know like how quickly trends change and how mm -hmm. they may differ from the different geographies. So it might be super challenging. Yeah. And yes. that's exactly what you're working on. Um, so can you talk about how advanced analytics can improve supply chain plan? Because other people may be yeah. in the same in the same situation you know, as you are. That's a, that's a good question too. And I think, you know, we are leveraging analytics and we have been for for many years, right? Maybe it's not AI, but I mean, when you think of machine learning, you think, oh, it's just, you know, very cool clustering and, and fun algorithms or, you know, all these different models, but, but really like, I mean, regression analysis, like uh, inventory forecasting, anything that you can leverage to, as an analytical tool is very effective. And so I, I think in our end, like we use analytics as a basic, uh, it's a basic foundation of how you're managing your supply chain, right? You're going to have an ERP system. You're going to have some forecasting technology. You're going to have stocking um, strategies, right? Fill rates and safety stocks. So I, I think all of those are, are going to be inherent with any big company that's doing big, massive supply chains. And, and I think a lot of the focus, at least in, in my realm, is not necessarily the advanced analytics per se. It's being used. Like like the last question we were talking about or the last topic, it's just how do we summarize and synthesize what we're doing and all the levers that we're doing with our models into a digestible leadership level like deck or, or, or tool in order for decisions to be made up top. And so a lot of the work that I'm focused on now is honestly focused on developing um, high level visualization tools, um, audit mechanisms in order for these senior leaderships to go, hey, look, let's look at our next geo, um, global geo for China, like three seasons from now. How are we performing on the inventory levels? Why is it that we're underperforming these product segments over these other product segments? Is there, you know, stocking issues? I, it's it's really creating that sort of visibility and, and breaking down the data and to understand like what is actually happening. And I think that's where the human component comes in. You know, we're, we're going to be able to have to explain, like, why did the model suggest this? Why are we doing things in a certain way? Is it, is it, are we, is, is, is the system pegged differently than how the business users are expecting it, right? Sometimes there's a disconnect with how the ERP system is set up and how maybe someone who's new to the company or, you know, just interprets it differently because you have so many acronyms in supply chain and each one can mean one thing, but might mean something else. And so 
it, it's it's the work of trying to make sure we're all aligned. I think that's that's the big picture. And and if you um for those who've done the MicroMasters, you know, think about the bullwhip effect, right? Like things in the bottom could ripple all the way up to the top. Can you capture that? Can you visualize that? Can you let senior leadership know that like, hey, the stuff that we're doing at this end of the supply chain is having a huge impact up top. Here's the visualization. Here's the numbers. Here's the summation, right? Tying everything together, I think, is is really the, I think, the, the area that we're focused on in supply planning is just like, we know the system's operating, but it's so big and so complicated. You know, can we simplify it? And can we kind of, you know, do a couple of like, light level uh, explanations of like what is actually happening but rest assured right like there's always going to be a need for these models and there's always going to be a need for these smes to to be able to go in there and toggle and tinker and adjust these parameters um so every everything everybody is needed but you know the higher up you go i think the more focus has to be on storytelling explaining like what is it that we're doing yeah for sure thank you jason so um, I have a question for you, and I see yes. many questions from the audience here. I believe it's connected to this. As you yes. know, Gen AI is a buzzword uh, now, and there are many potential applications for Gen AI, Gen AI in mm -hmm. procurement. But um, what potential do you see for applying Gen AI uh, specifically in supply chain planning? Are there any emerging examples or areas where you believe it could have a, a significant impact? It's uh, that's a tough that's a tough one too because it's hard to predict the future X. We don't really know where it's going to take it. I, I can say right now, um, at least how we leverage Gen AI is to really be the the starting point for some of our coding, right? So if you're trying to make some adjustments to whatever it is that you're doing uh, in your in your analytics world, and you need a base query, maybe you don't go to Stack Overflow, maybe you don't copy something from your teammates, maybe you can have Gen AI generate uh, full scale sort of a baseline code for you to tinker with. I think it's similar to how we talked about before, where there's a level of not fear, but just um, wanting control. I think that's where the, the Gen AI is is is, is, is going to come in. And if it shakes things up, we have to figure out how how do we incorporate that into our business realm? Because as I was saying before, people have functions that have worked before. And so it's going to be difficult to convince them to now, hey, let's not do this. Let's use this Gen AI to... I don't know, draft this report or, or do something else. I think there's a level of convincing that has to take place in order for people to be more comfortable with leveraging these tools. I think it's just, it's it's a tricky balance and we're still in, we're still in the growing phase, right? Like I think for now we're, you know, we've got stuff like a, you know, a pilot to use Gen AI for certain teams to start, you know, building products with it. But I think the playbook on how to leverage this is still like, happening right now i don't think anyone has the right know know how to, to really use these tools it's it's definitely going to change things up right just like excel changed up how we use business right every supply chain analyst knows how to use excel it's a tool that helps us do what we need to do gen ai could just be another initial at least at this level a tool that helps us do our things a little bit easier a little bit quicker but in terms of like suggesting different ways of of, of like stocking policies or, or building these models, you're going to need that expert. You're going to need the SME. You're going to need someone who maybe went through this coursework, who knows the fundamentals of supply chain to know, hey, that model, what it's doing, it's not what you think it's doing. It's good, right? It's a, it's, it's close enough. It gives you an EOQ, but it's not what you want to do um, for your business. So I think you're going to need these experts. You're going to need the people who know, you know, the fundamentals in order to manage potentially a starting point with Gen AI and starting point with Gen Code. It's revolutionary and maybe, you know, like five years from now, it actually does everything and it's super sentient and then we don't need supply chain analysts anymore. But um, I think right now, I think we still, we still have to use it with a little bit of caution, but it's definitely, it streamlines everything. Right? It can do things so quickly that it's um, very impressive. Yeah. Just, just building on that, I think Gen AI is like a great assistant. Right, so it does not substitute you. It cannot do the job for you, but it's a great assistant to help you be more efficient or more effective. And also, yes. I think it's also democratizing programming. So for people who are scared of working with code and you know, in data analytics, Python yeah. or, or R are so essential that now Gen AI is just uh, so powerful with coding that can really help people to you know, break that barrier and yeah. work with Python uh, to do like 
better analytics or more yeah, power. It's like a new coding language, right? You could also yeah. treat it as its own. You don't have to learn the Python language. You just learn the the whatever Copilot language, and then that's mm -hmm. gets you the same uh, same spot. So, I I, I who yeah. knows? You know, it's very interesting, and so you can never say never. And I think you know, very possible. Anything is possible. I think with this. Yeah. Yes. Um, great. Thank you for sharing your, your view on that. You know, it's a very new tool. No one knows where it's going, yeah. but uh, yeah. it's, it's always interesting to hear different perspectives. So, um, you know, data analytics is fascinating. That's why so many people joined us today. And no one doubts it's essential to effectively manage supply chains. That's out of question. But with the emergence of uh, plug and play analytical tools, you know, tools that are uh, just helping us just create uh, you know, amazing forecast, super accurate forecast, uh, just like with a click or um, doing like all these like uh, supplier analysis in a click as well and just tell you who you should be uh, doing business with. Do you think it's still important to learn the foundations of data analytics? You already mentioned it briefly earlier, but I would like yeah. you to like expand it a little bit more. 100%, 100%. Like, um... You know how I was saying about before, you know, going through the micro master's program and, you know, maybe through, through school as well, you like you learn something is maybe fundamental in an ERP system like safety stock. Like how is that derived? How is it suggesting that number in, in your system? Right. Like something as simple as that, that like most, I think, ERP systems, right. If you, whatever, you buy a license, they, they come in, they, they, they built it for you. You set a number, you're good to go. Like every ERP of the system has it. But I think it's so important to know why it's suggesting that unit, right? Like you can talk to management, you're like, hey, well, you know, our fill, you know, whatever. We we didn't stock it because the system said it didn't stock it. Like that, that there's you're gonna need the experts to know why are we doing these things? What why is the algorithm suggesting these things, right? The one-click solution is fantastic if it gets you what you need, but if the moment it fails, then you're you you know, you're you're out of luck, right? So I think the fundamentals are the underpinnings of basically how everything is going to be derived anyways. If you get in there and you are comfortable with, with learning the statistics and the math and the supply chain, the, the core fundamentals, that's never going to do you wrong, right? You're never going to be a, a, in a situation where, oh man, it's really unfortunate. Now I know how these things work. Uh, let me expand on it. Like it's just, it's just going to be helpful, right? Especially as the, the gen AIs and the models get more, more, streamlined, everybody's going to be able to use it. Everybody's going to create a model or, you know, do a quick Python script. But if you're not an expert on what it's suggesting, you're not going to be able to actually truly leverage the tool, right? It's going to be helpful for you if you don't want to write this like forecasting code, because it's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to take you like 10 minutes, but the Gen AI can do it instantly. Great. But you know how to tinker with that model. You know how to change the parameters in order to do what it needs to do. So the fundamentals are always going to be essential. Uh, and I think that's why I, I like the program so much because it, it really was very focused on the the core fundamentals math side of supply chain. It wasn't just concept of like, oh, we need to stock better or more efficient or supply chains are, are key to everything. It's like, it's it's going in there, you're, you're doing the math, you're actually breaking down, you know, um, all these different principles and, you, and you're, you're doing the numbers. And I think that's like, that's, that's the more that's the stuff that's going to stay with you. And that's the stuff that you're going to be able to leverage um, as you go in your career, um, especially if you're into supply chain and if you're in the analytics side, you're going to use it. We're going to use it. And, and you know, companies are going to leverage it um, for, for their businesses. So always going to need it. Thank you, Jason. Um, as Ima mentioned, we, we are a global program. So we have many learners around the globe. We have learners that already have years of experience in supply chain or years of experience in analytics, but we also have learners that are starting, right? Or maybe they are transitioning careers. So um, some of uh, the participants today are part of our MicroMasters program and maybe looking to involve themselves in the supply chain analytics field. So my question is, as a MicroMasters credential holder and advanced analytics professional, what advice can you give specifically to them? Yeah, I would say just, get involved and 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 get if if they've already owned the credentials i think just look for these type of positions look for what excites you uh and and you know finding these opportunities to get your hands uh you know dirty with the with with this field right i think 
everybody's gonna have a different journey. But if if you are passionate about analytics and, and you're passionate about making smart decisions for businesses and and, and and explaining why these things are gonna be critical and important, I think that's always gonna be useful. So, you know, I, I think if you can get through the program and and you love it and you and you and you and you enjoy this this process, then then keep moving forward, right? Look for supply chain positions, look for analytical positions, or even consider grad school, right? There's so many different pathways with the MicroMasters, not just the MIT program, but the Arizona State program, right? Top ranked supply chain school. Uh, you can do the Harvard uh, Extension School, right? Uh, very comfortable, remote, and, and you still get a degree. There's so many different pathways for you to keep pushing your passion uh, in this field um, that, you know, I think, I think, I think it, as long as you, you find this interesting, then to, to keep pushing forward with it. Uh, I think that's, that's the only advice. It's just, you know, if you love it, keep pushing forward, do it, and, and the opportunities will come, especially if you, if you keep researching and keep studying. Um, and you, yeah, you keep developing your skill sets. It's never going to hurt. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Hopefully, like uh, our audience is feels inspired with, with your with your words. And um, we have a few more minutes and so many questions from the audience. So let me launch sure. one last poll before we go to some of the questions. Um, all right. So this is um, a wrap-up poll. So you can start filling it in. This, the question is, what was the most interesting part of today's session for you? And while our audience responds, let me pick one of the questions uh, for you, Jason. So this one is uh, from Arslan Ahmed, and he is very specific about, you know, um, advanced analytics in supply chain management. So given your qualification in supply chain management, do you believe that conducting advanced analytics requires hiring a dedicated data scientist, or can it be effectively managed by the supply chain manager in the area? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I think it depends on how your organization is structured, like how you are um, built uh, within your org and how you're functioning. I can give an example here in, in, in our industry where even though I'm, I'm in uh, applied analytics, there's also a data science um, team as well, right? And so we've structured our world in that Applied analytics, right, goes and, and really is the front facing business side, right? So we, we can speak about, you know, what our data scientists are doing, what models they're building, and help bridge the gap and, and build sort of intermediary tools to, to, to explain and talk through the, the requirements that they need. But we also have a hardcore, like, data science team, you know, grad degrees, master's degrees, whatever, in, in data science. And their role is more focused on day to day getting into the models and, and sort of running these simulations. So I think it, it really depends on your organization and how you want to operate. As a supply chain manager, it doesn't hurt to know the data science side and be able to do those tools, but you may not necessarily want to allocate your entire time doing those models where you have to work with your stakeholders and you know work on these business uh, decisions that you have with your supply chain leaders. So I think it, depending on how your org is structured, if, if you want to be more data focused, you can, but it's probably also good to have, you know, a data science there to, to be able to, to, to run, run the simulations, but it can go both ways, right? A data scientist, it couldn't hurt them to know a little bit about supply chain. They know the customer, they know why the models are being built the way that they are. So it's a back and forth, right? It's, it's good to know both, um, but really it depends on how your org is structured and, and depending on what your needs are, you know, you could be the jack of all trades and, you know, wear many hats. All right. Uh, I believe you already answered Jose in our question. Uh, he was actually actually questioning about the program. How deep should be the software and programming knowledge and experience to be able to succeed on this program? I would ask you about the career, but you already addressed that. So I can take the program part, uh, the MicroMasters program part of the question, right? So you don't you don't need previous knowledge on programming or software tools. Uh, the course, the program will teach you as needed. So everyone is welcome to join our online courses on this. Ima, should we take our results now on the third poll? Just mm -hmm. yes, please. I think we have maybe time for one more question, Paolo. Awesome. Uh, right? Yeah, let's go with one more question before we wrap up. Um, so uh, Joseph Bernard, he's asking, in your experience, Jason, what's the most important 
data skill or skills, I guess he's referring more to tools to, to do data analytics, right? So he's wondering, I guess, what he should be learning. So he mentioned here SQL, Excel, data visualization tools such as Power BI, Tableau, or Python. Yeah. Um, so in your experience and, you know, on your own experience, but also like the, that of your colleagues uh, working yeah. in data analytics as well, what is the most important skill? What would you say? Oh man, I think um, that's a really tough one because I think I use all of them and I have different preferences depending on what, I, what stages of my career. I think that the, 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 this is a cop-out, but I think the biggest skill is just your ability and want to learn. I think it's, um, you know, your curiosity is probably going to be the most important part because I, I, I can tell you right now, like many companies still use Excel, right? Supply chain planning and supply chain, like it's it's not going to be that sophisticated. A lot of companies still, you know, save a lot of data and do their manipulations in Excel. A lot of companies use SQL, right? Like there's so many different cloud platforms and you have so much data. Now you're going to have to pivot it. So the, depending on the role, you're, you're not going to be able to avoid one or the other. It's It's very important. Like I also work with Tableau, right? If we're building tools for senior leadership. They want an easy, quick access clicked in order to view, you know, the entire company and how they're performing. That's going to play a role. So I, I, I don't know if there's any necessarily software that's going to be the, the end all be all. I guess you could say Excel is still king in, in terms of ease of use and, and visualizations and everybody can understand Excel. And so that's always going to be, at least for now, sort of a cornerstone of a lot of the software. But I think, you know, the curiosity to learn and, and to like, jump into things is going to be much more rewarding. And if you can go into Python and, and you're a wizard at it, like that'll ripple, you know, much more down, down the line, right? The Python is the flexibility and you can, you can do a lot of manipulations. And then of course your advanced models as well. So I don't want to say any tool. It's just, they're all very useful. Um, Just that if, if you're curious and you're willing to learn, especially if you're in a role where you're just doing Excel, but you want to learn Python, if your manager allows you or gives you flexibility to get that tool i think that's going to be great i think it's just as long as you're able to to have a little bit of time to like learn these new tools it's never going to hurt um and it's just going to strengthen your resume strengthen your your credentials for whatever it is that you're trying to do yeah. I, I love your response jason because i couldn't agree more that uh yeah. we don't know what are going to be the tools in the future or what may emerge yeah. so you should know the basic spreadsheets are there and they are ubiquitous they're everywhere yeah, yeah, so they're everywhere. everyone should know them but then you know mm -hmm. going beyond and and there's so many resources out there just to learn about almost anything that being curious and having this willingness yeah. to learn is i think it's essential this lifelong learning mindset is what is um keeps us moving and progressing in, in our careers so, yeah. yeah definitely critical yeah. Couldn't agree more all right paula do you want to comment the, the poll results yeah, let's let's see the results. So our question was, what, what was the most interesting part of today's session for you? And the majority replied that expanding my knowledge on supply chain analytics, which is great. This is one of our goals with the live event. Uh, learning more about the methods, methods pr practitioners use, 33% uh, response here. Getting ideas about how to improve your supply chain. Awesome. That's great. So it seems that people enjoyed the live event. We had more than 300 people connected with us today. It's great. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So I think we are right on time. So thank you so much, Jason, for such an interesting discussion. Uh, we really enjoyed talking with you today. I think you made amazing points uh, for our audience and left many different tips uh, for people to really like you know, keep learning and start exploring uh, different different areas, different tools. Definitely was very, very inspiring uh, for, for me as well to hear your passion and and how everything, that, all the stuff that you're doing in supply chain analytics. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. This is a you know, great opportunity. I'm happy to give back. And, and um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy people are, you know, in this program and looking forward to this, um, to this platform. I think it's wonderful. And I really do hope for those who are, who are, who love this thing and want to keep pushing and pursuing and, uh, yeah, for, for sure. Please reach out. I'm on LinkedIn. If, if anyone wants to have questions or connect and, um, yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's a wonderful. So please, please, please proceed for those who are interested. Yeah. It's great. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you everyone for joining us today. It was a great session. Awesome. See you next time.
All right. Goodbye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.